Hey, welcome back. In this episode, we're going to learn about introduction to DevOps security. My name is Sushant Sutish and I'm your trainer for this AZ400 Azure DevOps Engineer Certification course. So without wasting any more time, let's get into it. With continuous integration and continuous delivery, how do you ensure your applications are secure and stay secure? And how do you find and fix security issues early in the process? This begins with practices commonly referred as DevSecOps. DevSecOps incorporates the security team and their capabilities into your DevOps practices, making security a responsibility of everyone on the team. Securing application is a continuous process that encompasses secure infrastructure, designing an architecture with layered security, and continuous security validation and monitoring for attacks. And security is everyone's responsibility and needs to be looked at holistically across the application lifecycle. So let's learn about what is SQL injection attack. SQL injection is a type of an injection attack that makes it possible to execute malicious SQL statements. These statements control a database server behind a web application. Attackers can use SQL injection vulnerabilities to bypass application security measures. They can go around authentication and authorization of a web page or web application and retrieve the content of the entire SQL database. They can also use SQL injection to add, modify, and delete records in the database. An SQL injection vulnerability may affect any website or web application that uses an SQL database such as MySQL, Oracle, SQL Server, or others. Criminals may use it to gain unauthorized access to your sensitive data, customer information, personal data, trade secrets, intellectual property, and more. And SQL injection attacks are one of the oldest most prevalent and most dangerous web application vulnerabilities. Now let's learn about how to implement secure and compliant development process. First, let's look into threat modeling. Threat modeling is a core element of the Microsoft security development lifecycle. It's an engineering technique you can use to help you identify threats, attacks, vulnerabilities, and countermeasures that could affect your application. You can use threat modeling to shape your application's design, meet your company's security objectives, and reduce risk. There are five major threat modeling steps. It starts with defining security requirements, creating an application diagram, identifying threats, mitigating threats, and the fifth one is validating that threats have been mitigated. And the threat modeling should be part of your routine development lifecycle, enabling you to progressively refine your threat models and further reduce risk. The Microsoft Threat Modeling tool makes threat modeling easier for all developers through a standard notation of visualizing system components, data flows, and security boundaries. Now let's look into key validation points. Continuous security validation should be added at each step from development through production to help ensure that application is always secure. The goal of this approach is to switch the conversation with the security team from approving each release to approving the CI-CD process and having the ability to monitor and audit the process at any time. This diagram highlights the key validation points in CI-CD pipeline. Depending on your platform and where your application is at in its life cycle, you may need to consider implementing the tools gradually, especially if your product is mature and you haven't previously run any security validation against your site or application. Now let's look into infrastructure vulnerabilities. In addition to validating the application, the infrastructure should also be validated to check for any vulnerabilities. When using the public cloud such as Azure, deploying the application and shared infrastructure is easy. So it's important to validate that everything has been done securely. Azure includes many tools to help report and prevent these vulnerabilities, including Security Center and Azure policies. Also, we have set up a scanner that can ensure any public endpoints 
and ports have been whitelisted or else it will raise a infrastructure issues. This is run as part of the network pipeline to provide immediate verification. But it also needs to be executed each night to ensure that there aren't any resource publicly exposed that should not be. The application CI-CD pipeline should run within a few minutes. So you don't want to include any long running processes. The baseline scan is designed to identify vulnerabilities within a couple of minutes, making it a good option for the application CI-CD pipeline. This example outlines a step for both the application CI-CD pipeline and the longer running nightly OSWAP ZAP pipeline. Once the scans have completed, the Azure pipeline release is updated with a report that includes the results and bugs are created in the team's backlog. Resolved bugs will close if the vulnerability has been fixed and move back into the in progress if the vulnerability still exists. The benefit of using this is that the vulnerabilities are created as bug that provides actionable work that can be tracked and measured. That concludes this lesson. In the next episode, we're going to learn about rethinking application configuration data. I will see you in the next one. Until then, take care.